Alright, time for another super late Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles episode review. I just parodied Andre. <laughs> yeah. So, as I really do suck at doing these episode reviews, guys. I think the only ones I'm really consistent on constantly are everything else but this. This is why I know a lot of people have asked me to do a lot of episode reviews for a lot of other shows. But you can see why from just my TMNT reviews and how late they are. I suck at this. It's a mate like I had to drop off the Clone Wars and uh, Agents of Shield re episode reviews because I mean, excuse me, not Clone Wars, the Star Wars Rebels and uh, Agents of Shield reviews because yeah, I'm doing enough as it is. But I will do like season review, like season finale or mid season finale reviews, and yeah. Anyway, so. Anyway, uh, let's get start. Let's get into this episode. Uh, Outlaw Armagon. Now, Armagon is a character from the Archie comics. Who in here he's he's pretty much a bounty hunter for Lord Dreg. Who Lord Dreg's hired him to hunt down the turtles. And we don't really know Armagon's story other than he's a bounty hunting shark. You can actually. It almost feels like. Honestly, it almost feels like when you're when he's talking to Lord, you know, when Armagon and Dredd are talk and Dreg are talking, it almost feels like Vader and Boba Fett. It honestly feels like, you know, Vader having a conversation with Boba Fett, like no disintegrations. <laughs> Speaking of disintegrations, that happens. But yeah, the I like Armagon's new design. Of course, we have Ron Perlman voicing him, and yeah, I like the design that he his his ship is a shark that he's he's inside of. Yeah. We also get more information on the Fugitoid. We learn more about the Fugitoid and who he is and what happened to him, as well as his rela his relation to the Triceratons. As we discovered, the Triceratons were attempting to kidnap Hun uh, um, Zayton Honeycutt and make him, you know, build weapons for them. He said no. They killed. They more or less killed him. His robot saved his life by putting his brain inside its mind. And ta-da, Fugitoid. We and another thing we have, and this has been something that's been growing more and more, is April, who, for lack of a better word, she's Jean Grey. Let's face it, she is Jean freaking Grey, just younger. It's it's pretty much all new X Men Jean Grey. <laughs> yeah, I wonder how long until she like reaches into Michelangelo's mind or Raphael's mind and tells him he's really gay. If you're reading all new X Men, then you'll understand what I mean. Uh, anyway. But, yeah. What else did I want to say about... Th what else did I want to say... Um, about this uh, image... Uh, this, uh... This, uh... What did I, with this episode. Yeah, there's the word. We also get a new villain called Overmine, who's kind of like... You know, it, he's very much like Skynet. At the same time, I, I feel like when he's doing the whole robotize thing, that had to be a callback to the Cybermen. I can, you know, that had to be just absolutely a callback right back to the Cybermen. And, yeah, I thought that the action here was pretty cool. I've got a feeling that, you know, Ar you know, with the fights we've seen between Armagon and Leonardo, I have the feeling that Armagon and Leonardo are going to be, like, the new rival, you know, Armagon's going to be Leonardo's new rival. That's what I'm starting to think from watching this episode, is that because you see a lot of intensity between those two in those two solo fights between the two. So I think now that Shredder's gone, I think Armagon's going to be his galactic rival for a little bit until, you know, the Earth is once again saved and something like that. I'd also like to know Armagon's backstory, because he has said that he's eaten primates in the past. So I'm wondering, was he from Earth? Was he an experiment from... Um, the, was he an early experiment from the Krang that broke out and, you know, went on a bounty and decided to become a bounty hunter? Um, I really want to know uh, Armagon's backstory. I really do. Uh, what else did I want to say about this? The Warbots were cool. I, it were cool. Uh, again, it does feel like Terminator and a bit of the Cybermen. There's also, you know, with the dust, you know, when people actually being disintegrated, yeah, I guess Nickelodeon, they could just sneak by that with just, you know, piles of dust that were once human beings. I guess, you know, Nickelodeon can just, uh... <laughs> I guess they can just sneak by those sensors, can't... Uh, the, uh, yeah, those, uh, sensors, can't ya? But yeah, um... 
all in all, pretty good episode. Not else, much else to say other than it looks like we're finally getting into the main story because now they're hunting down one of the three artifacts of the Triceraton fleet, and it looks like that yeah we're going to find they're going to try and uh, find one of the three pieces to build the black hole generator. All in all, really good episode. Um, it's nice to see that Armagon's still going to be around, and looks like he's going to be a big threat. It's always cool to hear Ron Perlman do voice acting. He's been great as several characters, you know, Slade, uh, <laughs> Slade, and uh, and uh, Mr. Lancer from <laughs> from Danny Phantom. Yeah, for those who don't know, Ron Perlman was Mr. Lancer in Danny Phantom. Just just let that sink in. The man who played Slade and Hellboy was <laughs> was a guy who who had a weird <laughs> who had a weird obsession with classic novels. Just just wrap your head around that for a second and just try to just mentally picture that. Yeah. But all in all, really cool. This was a really cool, uh, also a cool... Yeah, I said it's cool three times. But yeah, I thought this was an interesting way to look at, you know, the origin of the Fugitoid, and yeah, I'm really curious to know how much more powerful um, April's going to become, because we see her, like, she's having a mental communication, and a, a mental talk with, uh, Z you know, with uh, Honeycutt, in, in Fugitoid's mind after he gets possessed by the Overlord, the evil AI. And I'm wondering to myself, how powerful is she going to become later on in the series? Because you do see in that intro, you see like a psychic blast come from her. So I'm wondering how much more power... Is she going to be like Dark Phoenix level power? I don't know. I mean, yeah, I know, Dark... Before anyone says, well, d actually, the Dark Phoenix is a cosmic entity. I know it's a cosmic entity. But it did, you know give a pa bit of a power boost to Gene, didn't it? So I'm wondering, like, I would not be surprised, because they have done homages in episodes before, I would not be surprised in the least if they if they made, like, a cosmic entity that was, like, a parody of the Dark Phoenix, and it possesses April, and we get, like, a mock episode of the Dark Phoenix saga, or a two-parter that's supposed to be, like, a homage to the Dark Phoenix saga. Would not be surprised in the slightest. And I'm pretty sure none of you would be either. Uh, so yeah uh, you guys tell me what did you guys think of this episode did you guys like it did you guys hate it just comment below let me know and once again hope you all enjoyed this review and I will see you guys later also yes I know before someone points I know someone's going to point this out in the re episode review in the comments below yes that is an image of Batman in the, co in the image you're seeing right here that's because this is one of the alternate covers for the upcoming Batman TMNT crossover from IDW and DC Comics I just thought the image looked cool. That was like, fine. I was like, oh, that's cool. I think I'll use it. <laughs> yeah. So that yeah, that that is one of the images from that one. That is one of the covers from the from the upcoming comic. Anyway, so once again, hope you all enjoyed this, and I will see you guys later.